was going to be able to show me on the computer? No, no, I just needed to go ahead and go live so it won't shut us, so it won't cut off the live stream. Good afternoon. This is Life Circle Poets Poetry Sundays, and you are tuning in at the beginning of our broadcast. We have my Yaya Nature and Bob One God Bedan online right now. Bob is getting ready to get situated so he can give us some fire. <laughs> And I have someone else in the studio. I'm not sure who that is. Um, okay, it looks like Bob's feed may have frozen up. Yaya, are you still there with me? Yes, I am. Okay, wonderful. Yes. You were sitting so still. It looked almost like you weren't there. Okay, so yes. Bob's, Bob's feed has frozen up on us, but hopefully he will be back momentarily. And there is somebody else in the room. I'm not sure who the person is, but um, I'm going to see if I can send them a message because it's not a name that I recognize. But in the meantime, Mama Yaya, how are you? I am good. Wonderful. Beautiful. You look beautiful as usual. Thank you. you <laughs> Thank you. And your energy is so calming. It always is. Your energy is always so level and grounding and peaceful. I love you for that. Thank you so much. For Thank our you. Viewers, for our viewers, my name is Kim McRae, Kim Gabalt to some. My poetry name is Redefining Freedom. And I am for the moment. I am going to be your host for this Sunday's Life Circle Poets Poetry Sundays. Hopefully, our host Melanin will be able to join us. But in the meantime, we have Mama Yaya online, and we've got some other people who, um, uh, okay, yes, okay, okay. So we've got some other people who hopefully will be tuning in. And um, give me one second to send this message. I, I'm sorry, this is a little all over the place at the moment. Mama Yaya, can you give us a poem to open us up? It's appropriate anyway. You're an elder and you are one of our featured performers. Please give us a poem to open us up for the day. <laughs> no. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, uh, yes, I am ready. <laughs> You're ready? Yes, ma'am, please. <laughs> Okay. This poem is called Crash the Information Force. Look out, it's the information force. It's my black brothers and sisters in the information force, spreading the vibes of the slave master among us just like inflammation in sores. It just keep on spreading, spreading, spreading. If it don't stop, it's an information force. Arm, if we are free, isn't that a force? Free up black brothers and sisters with a right to live without being forced. Drop dead the information force. Black ones, be tired to be a slave over a slave. That's the information force. It's master. It's a you. Fino make we come together. Check it out, black ones. Be ashamed to harass your color for. Did you get that last part? I did, did not. It was the last line one more time. It broke up just as you were getting there. Okay, it says, free up, black brothers and sisters, with a right to live without being forced. Drop dead the information force, black ones. Be tired to be a slave over a slave. For that no free, we no free. It's a disease. It's a disease. That's the information force. It's master. Is a user. We no make we come together. Shake it out, black ones. Be ashamed to harass your color for just an information force. Mm. 
Wow. Okay, Mama Yaya. This is a little different vibe than the poem that you gave us the last time. I'm kind of intrigued. Okay, thank you so much. So You're welcome. Tell me a little bit about what inspired that part. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. So that could be any any number of things that inspired that mm. poem. Tell me a little bit about what inspired Exactly. Me. You see, as you say, so much things is going ar ar around in the world right now. Mm -hmm. It is like an in thing, you know, where mm -hmm. the information, Us, you know, as a protection, mm -hmm. it is there for us to use us. Even those who work in it is not comfortable within it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, now, one, what is the information force? And its master is a user for the make we come together. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Black people are ashamed to harass their color for just an information for it. Oh, blessing, blessing. Thank you, my friend. That's it. Okay, that's so that's definitely oh. truth. That's yeah. definitely truth and wisdom. We need to be wise about the ways exactly. that we have information that we have yeah. and the ways that we interact with each other, right? True, true. So, so what are some things that um, some words that come to mind when you think about freedom? Because I heard you in the poem, that's not freedom. We're not free. What are some words when you think of freedom? What are some words that come to mind for you? First thing, the word freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't feel it is is our word. I don't feel that word. Within it, your internet keeps going in and out. Repeat what you just said. I am saying the word freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't think that word was made as a help to us. Mm. I think that word was made to keep us down. Okay. When I look into it, earth was created. It's stone for us to communicate. Mm -hmm. And when we look again, the only place where me could I say freedom makes sense is in a cemetery. Mm. Wow. So okay, wait. That's again, I say, how we've been crying for this word, using this word crying out as if we're looking some help from it. Mm -hmm. And our uh, whole world is in chaos, hurt, bandage, you know? We don't see where it's helping us. So, Missy said it no makes sense to be free and dumb. Mm. It makes sense for us to be free up, to be asking for free rights, free love, free liberty, you know, free unity. The, the, the word freedom... Since we can't see in nowhere where earth really comprehend it. Because earth creating sound for us to communicate. I don't think we should be using that word. I feel the word is holding us down. Mm, okay, so is it the word that's holding us down? Or is it the definition that we have of the word that's holding us down? What do you think? Words on a poem. We're just sister. tuning in. We're talking about the word freedom. I put a quote from Mama Yaya there on the screen. The only place the word freedom makes sense in today's world is in the cemetery. So we're talking about the word freedom and whether or not it's actually a, a thing that we can aspire to, whether or not it's helpful to us. So Mama Yaya, is it the word freedom or is it the way that well, we word Sound, they have taught us that we're on our way. We were taught mm -hmm. that word sound has power. Mm -hmm. And by using a sound over and over and over again, it's like it takes on to itself a form. 
it like it almost because we are look towards the sound to be a sound that free us up, give us some rights, give us some justice. Okay, okay. But that is not that is coming from the sound because at the same time we are private. They might hang us, they might drown us, they might shoot us, they might penalize us, everything. And at the same time, we are crying for freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, I want we your internet that. to act right. Your internet cut out just then. You said. I just realized it. We, were, we are taught that word sound is power. Yes. yes. Word sound are also symbols. Mm -hmm. And symbols have numbers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you should really know the right number for the right to be a sound, mm -hmm. you can know if the sound will, will, will be a sound that keep have a high energy or a low energy. So you're talking about vibrations and the ways vibrations that you actually energy. Shape yes okay okay this is good this is good okay talk some more about that so the word freedom you're saying doesn't vibrate on a high enough energy for us to actually be able to connect with it and become free exactly okay okay and what do you is there a word that you think would be more liberating for us? Or is there a phrase that you think would be more liberating for us? Well, maybe so if we start ask for free rights, then we mind will also look towards free rights. It will also generate what is free rights. We, we want free liberty. We want to be free of free sound, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think when you make your word fit your needs, it makes more sense. Because if you ask for something and asking for that thing, remember, remember saying, you know, even the, song, the, 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 the word, word, is words are the same word, spell sword. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you are asked for something and it now fit your needs, if you're asking for something and it not fit in your needs, I don't think we should really rely on that word. Ah, oh, Mama Yaya. In this time, Good. we word someone needs. Okay, so. This is good. All right. So you said if you're asking for something and it's not fitting your needs, maybe you don't need to be asking for that. Is that right? Mama Yaya. Yes, I keep put off. Yes, it keeps acting up, but it's okay because I understand why. You've got a powerful message you're trying to get across today. And it's okay because we're going to keep pushing through until you're able to, to deliver what you're trying to deliver. So I'm getting, yes, I'm getting ready to post this other comment that you just if you're asking for something and it's not fitting your needs that maybe you need to stop. To stop that word. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So what do you think a better word would be than freedom? What what word do you think? Free would right. Free right. Free Are you back, Mama? Okay. It yes, cut out. I'm here. Okay. I realized. You said free rights. And free up. Free up, yes. Okay. Yeah. So good. This is so good. And you know, I never thought about that before, but it's true. If you're asking for something it's for you, yeah, then maybe we need to change what we're asking, or maybe we need to stop asking permission that we know aren't going to give it to us. Does that make sense? I agree. I don't, yeah, I don't know. We keep asking permission to be free from people that made the decision to enslave us in the first place. 
and to put us in mm-hmm. bondage in the first place. So the reality of them ever genuinely granting this freedom that we're asking for is not really real, right? It's not working. It's not real. It's not working. Ooh, you opened up a whole big old can of worms today. This is good. <laughs> It's not working. I wish my earth people, my earth family will stop using that word. It's mm. not working. Mm. So free up or free, free, free sound, free. Up. Yes. Okay. So how do you teach the children this? Because for generations, we've been teaching the children to seek for and ask for freedom. So how do we teach the children this new way of thinking and this a better way of thinking. Um, someone just posted, Christine, Christine, Christine is in the room. She said, if you keep people for permission, people will begin to believe that they can actually give it to you. If you keep asking people for permission, people will begin to believe they can actually give it to you. Yes, that's, that's true. So we kind of give our power over when we're asking people for permission to be human, to, to be, you know, this is true. But like, have you been listening in on this conversation? I've been running all over the place. <laughs> to get, I, I got, I'm getting I'm getting my Teddy Riley on. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, like, get your Teddy. Just, no, 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 no. We want you to get your baby face on, not Teddy Riley. Get your baby. No, I'm I'm talking about as far as like technology. I'm I was okay. doing the whole Teddy Riley thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you get a lot of people that are listening and got it. <laughs> <laughs> got it okay because we're having a conversation mama has opened up a blessings whole goddess yes i'm sorry no I said, well, I say blessings to the goddess because i didn't get to say hi to her and greetings greetings greetings, greetings to you yes. amazing i'm so honored that both of you have agreed to be on the show and on the show at the same time this is this is fantastic so she brought a whole topic, her poem was about, about concepts of freedom. And yeah. she said that the word freedom doesn't vibrate on a high enough frequency that it's actually effective for us. So mm-hmm. there, there needs to be, if, if you're asking for something and it's not fitting your needs, then maybe you need to stop using that word. That I put the quote on the screen that's that's mama yaya's quote from a minute ago what are some of your thoughts on this because i know you're well, all about I, vibrations and yes, I, think, I think yeah because i'm very big on words and um i think it has been bastardized by the colonizers because they say they're always saying we're going to get our freedom you know mm-hmm. america always talks about getting our freedom you know but they're not talking about freedom of africans they talk mm-hmm. about the freedom for them to do what they can. So it's 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 such bad energy that went into you understand? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I believe that you know I was never a slave. My people were never slaves, they were captives. You know what I mean? And I try to change that term as well. You know, because a lot of people say, you know, uh we're, we're free slaves. I think that's an oxymoron because how can you say somebody's free and they're a slave at the same time? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, um, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I think the word the word has, but we 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 can make it. I think we make it powerful. You yeah. know what I mean? I think it all depends on whose mouth is coming from. A good song can come from uh, the mouth of uh, 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 Bob Marley, and, and, and that same song can be sung by somebody who just sounds very awkward. <laughs> and it can completely corrupt it and the vibrate because of the energy that's used when the song or the word or the poem or the phrases are put out into the world, that energy and that frequency is what changes how it affects the space that it's in. So yeah. that's because I've heard some Bob Marley songs and I was like, that ain't Bob Marley. <laughs> I was like, those are Bob Marley's words, but that ain't Bob Marley, you know, so. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, I, we, we, we talk about that in the poetry community as well. Well, I do anyway, mm-hmm. because you have a lot of poets that have, they have the right words. Mm-hmm. They have uh, uh, the right play of words. They know how to play with the words, make them uh, uh, do tricks, gymnastics, disappear out mid-air, <laughs> you know? 
But it's for some reason, you're like, eh, that poem just doesn't sound like they really believe what they're saying. You know? Yeah. Well, you don't um, feel it. You, you it, don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I just feel like the spirit of the poem is gone because they're so focused on performance. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're so yeah. focused on performance and, and 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 not messing up with a word, mm -hmm. and it takes away from the poem. I remember Nikki Giovanni, and I know I'm going a little out of the way with this, but Nikki oh, Giovanni. No, go everywhere. We go <laughs> everywhere up on here. Go everywhere. Okay. I heard Nikki Giovanni at a lecture at at, mm -hmm. at, at a lecture here in Connecticut. She said, she said, I, 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 I just wish my students would make a mistake. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. She said, I just wish they would make a mistake. Because I feel like poetry is not perfect. It's not mm -hmm. meant to be perfect. It's not meant to be to be cute. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's not meant to be commercial. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's meant to be truthful. You understand what I mean? Oh. So that opens up a whole other can of worms. So yeah. you just venture into this whole other thing where we have this dialogue in the poetry community around whether or not it should be memorized or read off a paper, around, um, and, and especially in the poetry community where if you make a mistake, then it winds up taking away from the value of the points that you get for the delivery on stage because you possibly could go over time. I mean, just all of this stuff. So, because mm -hmm. I know you engage in all of those worlds. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, first of all, first of all, the judge wasn't there when you wrote the poem. You know what I mean? The judges uh -huh. were not there when you wrote the poem. So if you mess up, it's fine. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. yeah. I think I have this one poem I've been doing for years and and then after doing the poem, I'll be like, you know, I'll be like, oh yeah, I had forgot to mention this, or I mentioned this backwards. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Because it's uh -huh. about the it's about the energy and the message that you're really trying to deliver sincerely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. and, and 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 um, you know, people are like, you know, there's there's some slams, um, you know, where. Because people don't understand the word slam actually means competition. That's basically mm -hmm. what it means. You're you're reciting a poem and, and 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 you're competing with other poets who are coming with these poems. The idea is not to be like them, but to be yourself and to mm -hmm. be sincere and honest and, and tell the story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think now it's like I think some judges are probably judging based on what a, 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 a spoken word poem is supposed to sound like. So some mm -hmm. judges are like, well, they didn't, you know, do that fake uh, uh, constipated crying thing <laughs> in their poems. <laughs> you know, when I feel like this, I'm like, um, you know, just be a little real. Just, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's right. okay. You know what I mean? It's, it, 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 what I liked about Nina Simone, for example, mm. she she sang, um, she had this song called Here Comes the Sun, Little Darling. Mm -hmm. That's such a simple song. Mm -hmm. You can feel so much out of it. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. You can feel that pain. You can feel that love. Right. You could feel that aggravation. You could feel the yeah. uh, appreciation of that word freedom. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Mama Yaya. So what are some of your thoughts on, because uh, a lot of times in the poetry community, we have people that will come and they'll go to perform a poem. And when they start, either they're reading it or they're performing it from memory and they'll mess up. And I don't know they messed up because I'm not looking. I don't know the poem. I don't know that they messed up. But when they mess up or what they consider to be messing up, then they'll stop and they'll say, I'm sorry. And they'll want to start over again. Or what What are you? I mean, is there is there room to mess up in poetry when you're presenting it to the rest of the world? What do you think? Well, as you say, you just say you don't know they mess up. Right. The one that yes, right. said they mess up. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I guess mm-hmm. if they even it is just natural for something like that to happen. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. you make a mistake, you don't have to make a one know you made that mistake. The, right. the most as long as you can fit in back mm-hmm. and make mm-hmm. what's working make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't have to make a one know that you made a mistake. That is how I yeah. see. But it wasn't yeah. a mistake though. It was meant for that time, for that moment. That's it. That's the whole thing that I think we struggle with is this idea of perfection. Like Nikki Giovanni said, I wish my students would mess up. You know, so everybody wants to be perfect. We all. That is it. Yeah, we all strive to present this polished image to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be who you are. I think it's okay to be who you are. It's okay right. because we all right. have imperfections. I'm gonna tell you, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. So if beautiful. my poem comes out sounding like a mess, it's because that's what the heck I am. Like that moment. You understand? I mean, you know, so I, I think that's okay. But is is there really permission in this world that requires perfection of us? And there are some very real consequences to showing. This faulted, this this faulty side of ourselves to the rest of the world. So, is are are we really safe? And for lack of a better word, I'm going to use the word safe. Are we really safe when we're that that vulnerable when we're on stage or when we're addressing other people? Are we really safe in being that vulnerable? Um, I I, I wonder what it would be like if God. And during the fall, just went and picked up all the leaves and put them back on the tree. You understand? <laughs> you know, I wonder what would that be like? You know, it would be such a pretty stench because they would be dead leaves just looking all pretty on the- <laughs> You know, maybe God would just spray paint them green and, you know, make them. We're not, you know, because we live in a world of imperfection. And yeah. our poems have to fit in this world of yeah. imperfection. Our, my poems are very imperfect. They were meant for the imperfect human being. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not writing it for the billionaires and the trillionaires. I'm writing it for, you know, for the young ladies who are coming into these poetry venues and you don't know what they went through. You know, right. they don't know why they came to that space. You know, they probably were violated. You know, as a child, they probably were violated by the, by somebody out in the street. You know, yeah. you know, they probably don't even have the words to express what they want to say. And they come to a poetry venue and they're like, oh, that's it. I'm mm-hmm. going to write a piece when I get home. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was okay for you to be imperfect. I didn't know it was okay to make a mistake. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Mama, yeah, yeah. You look like you wanted it's to say so something. Mistake, you know. Yeah. How would you balance the, the perfectness? Because I, whenever I make a mistake, I would say to myself, then, well, I see the negative to enhance the positive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel no way to see the negative because if I never see the negative, I would know the reason or to the use to enhance the positive. That's a good point, because if it's all perfect, then it looks like this. Right? Exactly. So, so you keep it safe. You just, you know, you see to balance. It's a yeah. balance. Yep. It's just balance. that which... I agree with that. That's good. That's good. It's just which one you're, which, which one you're really going to use, because it, it, there's no sin to see the negative. It mm. helps you to use the positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of that is so true. Oh, that's so good. This is such a good conversation. Okay, so first of all, let me apologize to my viewing audience. I completely broke protocol. You don't even know who these people are. <laughs> they are awesome people. I'm loving them. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, the audience doesn't know who you are. I didn't read your bios. I didn't give them any information about who you are. All they know is your names were on the flyer and they mm-hmm. show be able to talk poetry today. So (laughs) I am going to read a little bit of each of your bios. Mama Yaya, I'm looking for yours now. I did receive it. I'm looking for it. But um, I've known 
for a while. We don't know each other, know each other like like that. We are familiar with each other through being in the same poetry community. We've been we've shared space often in the poetry community in Connecticut and in New York. Um, and Mama Yaya, I am just getting to know you, and I gotta tell you, I'm fascinated, and I need to know more about you because <laughs> you've got so Bob. The other week, she showed up and she did this nice soft poem for the children, and then she shows up this week yes. about how freedom isn't free and how we need to use a different word. I was like, wait, okay. <laughs> So we got to think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving the liberation, liberation or emancipation. So, yeah, Mama Yaya, what do you think about those words? Because we only talked about the word freedom. What do you think about the word liberation or the word emancipation? Well, it is a word that when we look into it, it show that it has some space of necessity to us. Mm -hmm. So you have to watch now, is it forming an action? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we really forming an action from it? The word liberation and the mm -hmm. word, but the other word I want again? Emancipation. <laughs> emancipation, you see, you know, we have to okay. see how the action of these words are working for us. Mm -hmm. Do yes. you think that either, do you think that they are? Just, just your opinion, do you think either They can just be an illusion to you know, mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're supposed to be getting from those words when you're using them. It can just be an illusion too. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. I um and another thing that I and I promise y'all, I'm gonna get around to reading the bios, I promise you, but we're just kind of caught up in this moment. I wanna go with the flow. So <laughs> another thing that I find is these words that we use, oftentimes we use them in the context of I or self. And we don't think about how the way that we are using them in the context of me affects everybody else because we're all connected. So we don't think about how when I say I need to be liberated and I do things in a certain way to get what I call liberation, how I might be um, putting so I might be taking somebody else's liberation away or I might be putting somebody else in bondage. I might be restricting somebody else's rights. I might be acting in privilege and, and costing somebody else something that they need for their liberation. I don't think we think enough about that. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be free, but at what cost? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you see, we really have to be careful because as we know, as we know again, we don't all have a real tongue and to take a person's language away from them is really a slavery situation. Mm. You take a one language. It is, your language is very important mm -hmm. because if, to, to see how language is important when you look on how animals communicate mm -hmm. from birth, they understand them never have to go read a book to know them language from birth them over them language from birth whatever it is they them over it they mm -hmm. didn't have to read so we know say language is a, a naturality where if 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 that get taken away from you really a slavery situation you really find yourself in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you look and see that you have people that coin words coiners of words it's a science mm -hmm. right and these said people that coin words take for instance we are say english 
English me know. Me no know no other language but English, right? Mm. But coming up in life and getting to understand the self, inner mm -hmm. self, and get to know me inner self now. And getting to know that what I have, all of it was being taught to me by someone else. I have somebody else opinion. I have somebody else thought, not mm -hmm. my own. Right? And when I get to realize when my own, when I start to realize my own thought of things and about things, when I get to start to you know say the self within me is a higher power than yeah. even so why my higher power couldn't guide me why me appear to go for somebody else's opinion and somebody else thought you know mm -hmm. yeah it, it made me feel like i'm less yeah. than what i am yeah wow you know, I, I feel Kinds of words that give us words don't they make mistakes too? Don't I they make mistakes too? Mm -hmm. I agree with your trillion, trillion, billion percent, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I think in this in this world we have a lot of um folk who go off of something that they heard, and mm -hmm. it's very, very dangerous. You know, I mean, for example. Emmett Till was lynched because the whole community around that area felt that he did it because they said he did it. And then right. the whole, and then you had all these, and, and you had this whole crowd of people who were like, yes, he did it. Yes, he did it. White woman down there. Yes, he did it. White man down there. Yes, he did it. That boy did it. That boy did it. And next thing you know, it's like tons of people are saying, this guy did it. And the one person who stands up and says, I don't think he did it. Then they're going to look at that person and say, everybody else is saying he did it. It's so, mm -hmm. so, you know, I think I think it's very dangerous not to have self-thinking. We live in a world where people who claim that they have self-thinking really don't have self-thinking. I feel mm -hmm. like the people who claim to be woke, let me see, I'm trying to look for my camera. People who claim to be woke, <laughs> I feel like these people, people who claim to be deep, I feel like they're just drowning. People who claim mm -hmm. to be broke, they're just tired because they ain't got no sleep. They need to mm -hmm. rest. You know what I mean? <laughs> because yeah. they're, what yeah. they're doing is they're regurgitating somebody else's philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. They regurgitate right. that to the community. They don't right. even go and research. They don't go and try to find out, is this true? Who is this guy's background? Who wrote this book? What was the person, you know, what background did that person come from that wrote that book? They're going to go because it sounds so good to them and so profound. They're going to start a YouTube, right? And get all these followers. And then now it's hard for me, somebody like me to say, well, this guy is, you know, he's not the real deal. You know, he's, right. he's lying. But Everybody done said that. Now you got a bunch of knuckleheads right. around <laughs> praising Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're praising Trump. They're saying uh, Trump is, and I don't mean to get on, on political, but go there. You know, I like, told you we go everywhere on here. Go there. <laughs> it's, it's like you have the same this guy who's very disrespectful to people, who's very racist. He's openly racist. He said the worst things, right? And then here you have uh, a black man who was walking on eggshells in the White House. He was mm -hmm. walking on eggshells. He tried to do everything right. He tried to satisfy everybody. And no matter how well that man did, because he was a black Much man, outside. because he, was, he wasn't as privileged as this. And Trump is a perfect example of privileged. Mm -hmm. He's a perfect example of that, and our people are the worst because we're running around here, and we're trying. We're like because it sounds deep. It's like Trump is trying to tell us something. Trump is trying to save our health care. Trump is trying to save 
um, trying to tell us not to take the vaccine, which I don't believe in the vaccine, by the way. But, you know, <laughs> they're trying to give him credit for that. You know? mm -hmm. you know? and I, I, I feel like I'm going on a tangent, but what I'm saying is that we need people to become more self-thinkers in this mm -hmm. world. You that need you them think to become self-thinkers. Think yeah. for yourself. Use yeah. common sense. Go and research it. You know, because now Trump is getting all the credit because of photo ops. They're saying, well, this man, he, uh, uh, what was it? Prison reform. Something Obama started years ago. Now he, he's getting credit for it because he, he he's doing the photo op. And everybody's like, well, Obama gave us a, 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 a prison reform. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Trump gave us prison reform. I'm like, no, Obama did that. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's like we should have to feel like we got to be supermen and superwomen to yeah. get the same respect that they're getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, take these kinds, we take this kind of behavior, my brother and sister, and hold back ourselves. Because, mm -hmm. all right, for instance, I come up in life here. I come up in a Christian family. I grew up in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was saying I grew up in a Christian family. And I hear people singing a song saying, you just know the song, you know, but me, me I said, the, the, the song I say, like I say, in my after. To bless a rich like me, oh, oh Lord, amazing grace, Lord, my God. something yeah. like that. Amazing bless grace, a rich like me. What a terrible thing for you call yourself a rich. No, this man will make this song must have seen himself to be a rich because of what he has done to others. Mm -hmm. And if that song something for himself, it fits him, right? And then a whole yeah. congregation. That's Come it. now, singing this awful song and calling themselves a wretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, it's we it, need to things. Yeah, the understanding of words and the power of words is really important, and I'm so glad that you started off today bringing that into the conversation because that is very important. And especially as poets, that's one thing with this platform that we have to be very aware and um, very responsible when we decide to, the words that we decide to use and the way we would decide to use them, we need to be very aware and very responsible because of the ways that it impacts the audience that we're speaking to, the ways it impacts the air that we're speaking in the ways that it impacts the tomorrow that we're supposed to be building in what we are even to know that we are in exactly. exactly exactly so i just brought melanin in melanin okay. is going to i'm going to turn the show over to melanin at um at the top of the hour so that he can take the second half of the show uh, bob i we didn't get a poem out of you yet <laughs> so I'm going to oh, read. Oh, you want to poem? I'm, I'm ready. You want to poem? I know you are. You're always ready. I know. I'm okay. going to read a little bit of your bio so that the people can be prepared for the fire that you're about to deliver to us. So give me a second to pull it up. Bob One God Bidan okay. is a Haitian African American poet, performing artist, actor, playwright, and sometimes comedian. Founder and facilitator of Free to Spit, one of the top longest running open mics in New Haven, Connecticut. His career stems from working with Mary J. Blige, Busta Rhymes, Muta Baruka, Missy Elliott. He shared the stage with Avery Brooks at the Yale Repertory Theater and has traveled throughout the U.S. as a performance artist and poet and is now international by way of the internet. Holler, holler. Can, I'm going to put his contact information in the comments. He is on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to put your contact information in the contact so that people can know where to find you. 
Yes. Uh, well, on, um, on Instagram, that O is actually a zero, just so they know. Okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Do I go now? Do I go now? Absolutely. Yes. Go right ahead. All right. Black like dark moons. Shine on water converging into black lagoons. Sweaty skin covers brown mothers melt into molten statues. Standing altars, altered figures run for cover, chasing, trying to find her skin. Deemed a sin. Scarlet letters branded on bosoms like tabloid tattoos can shoot logic. Confessions to the father crucified. Blood clots couldn't wash trauma. Secrets discreetly tucked in paper bags. Recycled body parts. Fetal death. Fatal Hail Mary. Full of grace. Blessed is the fruit of, of thy womb, mother of God. Fabric covered beauty, eyes unveiled naked truths. Masculine manifestos, torture feminine point of view, censored, undocumented scriptures scribed on her lips like the seventh seal. These women move in silence. Words shatter self esteem like stolen dreams in glass vessels, strangled, held in a thrusthold. Wounded wounds, rooms broken into, stolen Virgo virginity, misogyny laws, justice put on back burners, starved souls. Faith comes in double standards, egos needs let go, surrender is machismo. Arrogance manufactured religion only to convince her she was less than he, but he without she is incomplete. Lost thought, tribe intangible without a sentence. The paragraph is only a run on oxymoron. Run, tell that. Hail Mary, mother of Jesus. Thorn, hail, O Mary Magdalene, last supper, hidden disciple. Cipher her discipline. All hail beside the Messiah's feet where he stood, misinterpreted. Sorrow saturated eyes, witness lynching. Blood dripped from the feet of her lover like the cup they sip from for the more. This is the cup of my bloodshed. Blaspheme her existence from books. Holy be her name, shallow be thy truths. Let he without sin cast the first stone. Dethrone stone hands mentalities, tally their truths, truths to blame apples. What is the fruit of thy judgment? And why so much hate for she who mothers nature? Slaughter the shepherd, the Lord is my staff. Cup run it over, overlooked talent run down. Born a woman spawn, rumble in the jungle, jungle chasing shadow boxing. These internal wars to break break down these walls, it's a man's world, a woman's prison, augmented wisdom, detain, derail, railroad minds, not question these male enhanced philosophies, penile system, circumcised young girls at birth at the cost of what word, what word, what made your religious audacities more profound than the grounds of nature intended, ain't nothing sacred bound to these sexist pages, stereotype typos, unsung sheroes, bearing your crucifix, legally lynched metaphors scribed in Sunday's church sermons, preacher men. What about Mama Maya's gospel piece? I wasn't ready for that to end. I thought there was more. <laughs> that was good. Wow. So you blended scripture. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You, you know you got to talk to us about where that came from. That that definitely had an origin. That poem. Us about that. Well, there was a year. It's every year, but I mean, it's every year. But there was a year specifically um, when you had all these men um, deciding what a woman's right should be. You know, as far as like a woman having the right to whether she had the right to abortion or not. And and um and what and, and and we've had these discussions in our heads so many times that it would bring back for women not having those rights, for these young girls not having the, the privacy to go and speak to their counselors mm -hmm. privately and to go, you know, it's gonna bring back the hanger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in that mm -hmm. part, you know, uh, uh, you know, so so and and these men who are making these laws and these rules and and arguing all of this for women they're using religion mm -hmm. as a scapegoat so it's like it's like they use religion to control the population of people in particular women you know what i mean they go to the old scriptures when they want to and then they go to the new one and and i feel like uh, uh in the bible like a lot of stories that were told about women was always how the woman messed up you know for example the sister that turned into a pillar of salt mm -hmm. you know and then you know it's because god told her not to look back and then she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt eve 
is is accused of eating an apple, and that's their you know that's their excuse of why the woman is the the sinner, and and you know so it's I just feel like um and throughout history it's always been the woman who secretly um the who well not secretly uh, uh they were put on the back burner. But a lot of women, especially in the civil rights movement and so on and so forth, even like right now in the Black Lives Matter movement, is it's women that are in the it's women that are um that's the strength of the movement. It's women and, and um uh, uh uh um wow, you know, is is like I don't think there would be a Malcolm without a, 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 a um, wow, Betty Shabazz. Mm -hmm. It would be a, a Martin without a, a Coretta. You know, I mean, you know, without a um, Coretta Scott King, Coretta. without mm -hmm. a Coretta. They, these, they wouldn't be me without a, 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 my ex lady. Like she was into, she was more cultural than I was. She introduced me to Amina Baraka. Amina Baraka introduced me to Amiri Baraka, who. You know, and and I met her son, uh, um, Ross Baraka. You know, uh, um, at, at this joint they had in Jersey called Verse for Verse. You know, and 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 my poem blossomed, and it was because of this woman. You know, who who said, "Well, I'm going to introduce you." I I had no idea who Amina Baraka was, and now mm -hmm. the place that she introduced me to Amina Baraka, I now use as my venue that i've been wow. running for the past 15 years you understand mm -hmm. what i'm saying so mm -hmm. it's uh it's always women and 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 obama perfect example his woman said we're not gonna walk through the back door i gotta do it in Barack obama's voice my wife said michelle said we're not gonna walk through the back door we're not gonna walk through the back door we're gonna go to the front and i'm <laughs> going to sit at that desk <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> no one's looking. We're gonna jump on the bed. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I appreciate all of those observations, though, because I mean, and being a black woman, I have absolutely no shame in saying it. Black women stay saving people's lives. Black women stay saving the world. Black women stay making statements and making moves and making movements that wind up underappreciated under-recognized, undervalued. So I appreciate you making that point and, um, and being able to acknowledge the ways that, because um, most of the time when we hear these conversations around abortion and things of that sort and the way that this, um, this world order is regulating women's bodies, we don't hear it in the context of black women. We often just hear it in the context of women. And there's a big difference in the ways that these things affect black women and the ways that they affect white women or women of other races. So I appreciate you um, lifting up that, inter, that, inter, um, that intersectionality that is part of who we are as women in this world. Thank you for yeah. that. And Yaya, what are your Thank you. beautiful poem? Did Mama Yaya's freeze? I think hers is frozen. Okay. Well, she'll be back, I'm certain. <laughs> Melanin, how are you? Unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Yes, are you hearing me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Wonderful. I'm going to sit back and yep. turn this over to you. It is five o'clock. My time, four o'clock yours. I'm gonna turn this over to you so you can take the lead. We are still hoping that Rainmaker oh, you will- chill with us? Huh? Yeah. You don't wanna chill with us? I'm, I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna be chilling. You're gonna see me cutting up. I'm gonna be snapping and all kinds of this. All right, all right, all right. right here, I'm gonna turn my mic off. And um, we're still hoping that Rainmaker will join us. I have not heard from him yet, but hopefully he will be able to join us before our time is over here. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to you, take it away. Yeah, greeting sister Kimberly. Thank you very much more for sitting in for me. Um, you know, by my place, I have internet connection. When it's not internet, it's camera, it's some kind of connection. I just, uh, I just can't seem to consistently get it right, but 
still working at it. Um, brother Boab want God be done. Uh, the first time really yes, hearing sir. you and, and stuff, but I can see you're a very experienced poet and you have very inspirational work. So give thanks for sharing your art with us here on Poetry Sundays. And blessings, blessings. Really, I'm giving thanks to all those who are tuning, tuned in to us at this present moment. And I, Sister Maya, are you back with us? Yes. So, um, brother, I was enjoying your poetry. I don't, I don't mind you going into another poem. You know. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I just saw Jamaica, Jamaica say, uh, <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah, we want I more. Know, if you, if you dear. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we want um, more. Let me see. Let me see. Um, I Nas times 10,000 Ray Kwans on some G rap ish spitting rock him. Gargantuous wordsmith with a sick pen. It's an emergency. These rhyme ought to be in the hospice, so encrypted a corner I can decipher my mind so ancient to pyramid. You're going to have to read it in Morse code before it explodes in five seconds. The countdown has already begun five seconds ago. My apologies for your missing limbs, missing gems, the gemstone branded in the 10 crack commandments, the dead MC scrolls of Saul or Moors riding on the wall, purple rainforest, tainting piano keyboards, reinforcing why you ought to know that I'm a thriller, shoot much further than a bullet, check the cockpit. I've already pulled the trigger, gave the middle finger on some foul ish. Tip on the shoulder, chip on the shoulder, misdemeanor, midsummer night dream. I'm a ghetto Shakespeare. Him still raising Lazarus from the dead, break bread. Bring mics to life, stay connected to the speakers, but don't try to stereotype me into a trap. Or you just might find me, find me yourself stuck, lost between stanzas. I leave a hook shook, scared to look death into the eyes of Horus running with halfway crooks. I'm a metaphor assassin, sharper than a ninja sword, slicing syllables down to the root and be like, word. Forget what you heard. I'm a hater's nightmares fantasy. The sun came out yesterday. I found tomorrow never never, never land in this hard knock life. Pre-created the post-production of the blueprint. Who am I? The MC was me. The MC was me. Never fallen, just a resting giant. So don't try to play me or you just might wake me and I'll awaken your third eye chakra. Help you find God. Ask for forgiveness. Repent before judgment. I am my own revolution. Fighting since 1804 BC, the squad that rocked the floor, moved the crowd like 36 chambers, culture dice. Lost my religion before Christ. I was born in the tombstone, underworld, half man, half amazing, reincarnated, incarcerated, scar faced. Bring my writings within a scalibur. What's a king author to a you god? I am one god, black, African, universal being beyond the acronyms, indoctrinated the pseudonym and became him because I am the father of Egypt. Call me Kemet. My palms are continent, gripping an Asiatic mic, spit truth from a son that you cannot shun or even run from. For thy kingdom come, thy will has already been done because it was written. I'm a battle in Brooklyn Flatbush in front of a bodega before Ju Juicy, call me Big Papa, a chronic apocalypse, a thorough eclipse birthed by the sun and the moon. Go through a whole crew of old shoons, find me in a dark room with old goons where deep thinkers play chess. On goddesses, fair ghetto breasts, holding fruit platters, sitting at that right hand of Selassie, I am Bob Marley, chanting one love. Revive two birds in the dust, squeeze water from a stone on the throne adjacent from the 11th constellation. I am I am the dreadlock lion, Rubo Arasta, the rage of Shango, the concrete parable sphinx tongue of a lyricist. Peace. One love, black power. Yes. Really, Thank really you. enjoyed that one, you know? Thank you. So, Thank you. What's the inspiration for a poem like that? That one right there was... um. Okay, uh, I'm I'm a hip hop head. I'm a hip hop head. I, I can and tell. I, I can tell that. <laughs> and my favorite <laughs> MC, my favorite MC of all time is Nakim N A K I M. A lot of people wondering who Nakim is. That's Rakim and Nas. That's Nas and Rakim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so this piece right here. Um, originally, I, I I wanted to write a tribute to Nas. As an artist, you know, so a lot of a lot of innuendos in the poem, you know, will, will probably you'll probably hear a lot of if you listen to Nas music, yeah. you'll hear a lot of his stuff. It was written, you know, yeah. I am, you know, so um and 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 um and and it's just like 
this whole thing with the um with you know like you know you might find yourself stuck lost between stanzas you can't put me in the trap i'm not trying to become you know what i mean like dumbed down i'm not trying to dumb down my culture i'm not trying to dumb down my people you know uh it's it's um and it's the tongue of a lyr lyricist because it's like the tongue is actually the sphinx it's now the sphinx you know has become the sphinx so it's like the tongue is the power more powerful than the sword i don't know it's just that piece just came to me and nas inspired it to be honest with you uh, because i was writing a tribute for him it was a tribute yeah. for him. I really yeah. like that. I'm, I'm a. Sometimes I don't like using the word fan, but I really love Nas music as well. But Tupac yes. is my favorite um, artist, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I mean, like, 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 like. I mean, like, I think they all built each other. I think, um, I think Tupac sort of woke Nas up. You know, but Nas was already a wise young brother. You know, what I mean, like he was like he. He he like Rakim, he Nas too played an instrument. You know, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and and, and uh, uh 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 you know in 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 um what I appreciate about Nas is that you know, because he had a father who was in his life, who was present, you know, even you know, his mother was there, but his father was present. Nas says, Look, um, I'm gonna drop out of school. His father supported him on that. As a matter of fact, I think his father encouraged him to drop out of school. Was like you know that place is not it's not for you you know what I mean like basically like you know go and educate yourself homeschool you know learn stuff you know and and and, and Nas uh, uh uh I just appreciate the young brother I mean the brother like he's he and I are like close in age so yeah I appreciate him and a lot him and Rock him yeah man, I can tell I can tell I can tell that you're really into their music you know and and to me. Their music, it, it's poetry. Yes, it Nas, is. Nas, Nas, Nas poetry is deep poetry. I, you know, I, I love listening to Nas. Nas is actually one of my favorite um, rap artists in a very conscious music. Um, but I really love how you write that poem. It's not just rap, but Bob Marley, Rastafari. Because, yeah. as you know, rap comes out, came out of dancehall music slash reggae music. Yeah, and it did. It did. I but think a lot of people don't know that Cool Herc was Jamaican. You know, Herc. Yeah. You know, a lot. And but the truth is, I think the music, hip hop, rap, dancehall, it they have been feeding off each other for more for decades now. And I yeah, think African, African Americans and Jamaica yeah. and African Jamaic, African Jamaicans and African Americans. I think we're the most dominant black people this side of the world. And our music speaks to that. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. Because I, I, you, you, you gotta love, you gotta love reggae. Like I mean, a friend of mine and I were, we were talking uh, the other day, and and, and uh, she was listening to some, um, some reggae, and she was like, uh, 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 she was like, do you hear that? Do you hear what he said? She was listening to Ziggy Marley, and I was like, um, I was like, yeah, you know, but my man, you know, my man is Buju, you know, I'm a big Buju, you know, all day Shiloh. You know, I mean, like, um, 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 uh, so, so, uh, 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 you know, it, it because it's spiritual. Our music, I mean, because hip hop came from the jazz and the blues as well. You know, like, you know, that's hip hop came ja from jazz and the blues, the bebop era. You know, uh, uh, you know, and 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 we were also inspired by reggae. You know, and and I felt like in the '90s, the reason why J the Jamaican and, and and American, you know, we all African. You know what I mean? Actually, I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian, born here in the you you know in Babylon. So you know, I, I I you know I'm Haitian, born here, but I'm still from African. You know, we were the Africans that uh, uh that overthrew the French. And, and claimed our independence in Haiti in 1804 because I even say that in the poem I said I am my own revolution, you know. You did, you did that along with my brothers from Saint Thomas, Jamaica, you know. Because yeah. where I'm from in Jamaica, Saint Thomas, we're the most easterly part, and we've had a relationship with Haiti that dates back hundreds of years. And Dotty Bookman, you know, Dotty Bookman was very instrumental. Yeah. He's from he's he's from here. 
he, yes, he yes. left on a boat and went over there to Haiti. Yes. And, uh, and since I was a boy, I, I had I know persons going to Haiti on boats and coming back in a day or two. And you know, I get to realize that St. Thomas, the eastern side of Jamaica, has a very strong relationship with Haiti. Oh, Bali Creole? Yeah, I read. Huh? Bali Creole, man? Okay, I, I, don't, I don't know your Creole, but I, I definitely right. know that you're my brothers. <laughs> yes, you always, you're my brothers, definitely. We all on the same, you know, uh, yeah. uh, because a, a friend of mine, his name is Kualo, he actually educated me on Bookman. And the reason why they called him Bookman, you know, because he was always reading a book. So they call them Bookman, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and and and, and um, the the revolution was inspired by him, you know. Mm -hmm. The reason why we won, um, you know, and I think we sparked Haiti sparked the Pan African movement as well, you know, yeah. and, and, and 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 I think that's why you know uh, they don't really like us that much now because it's like you know these guys spark, you know, because like. Um, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the Atlantic some trade? The Atlantic trade? Is, what is it called? Atlantic it? slave trade. Huh? The Atlantic slave trade. No, no, it's called the something. In, in New Orleans, it's called the something okay. trade or the sale. I forgot what it's called. I bet okay. you as soon as I get off, I'm going to remember. Yeah, yeah. How that's you doing, good. Sister Maya? Huh? Maya, you're, you're back with us? Yes, I'm back with you. Yeah, man, give thanks, because I realize you're, I, you're... I'm getting more... rain on my side here. I'm getting a hard rain. Okay, you okay, I mean? okay. Sometimes I don't even hear what you're saying properly. Okay, we but understand. I'm here. I'm here. We understand. Give thanks. Well, then, you know, I have a poem that I would like to share with the audience. It's called I Am. And this is my tribute to the resilience of my people. Go yeah. ahead, brother. So here goes. I am mission, ambition, love, desire, and confidence. I am my ancestors' vision, strong, bold, outspoken, and loud when necessary. Yes, I am rock solid man from the plantation. Now the gully, the ghetto, bowels of society, St. Thomas the Forgotten Parish. Rastafari from Springfield, Church Corner, Trinityville, Port Morant, Botany Bay, Morant Bay, who will never give up. I am the possible, impossible, the dirt turned into rock, the climax of Africans crossing the Atlantic, the slave master's worst nightmare, the offspring of mama and papa's unplanned sex, whipped till I feel beating no more, killed till I can't be killed no more. Hated till I can't be hated no more. Been so poor till we can't be poor no more. I am only living because I've died a million deaths, taken a billion intoxicated breaths. I am Africa, not just Jamaica. I am loud beating coming at drums, not just reggae guitar strums. Your past, present, and future. Gold mine they never knew existed. Water that quenched thirst no one knew existed. From the earth, this diamond can never be evicted. Who give thanks? Because I am. And I, you know? And I think that's who we all are. We are resilient people. We are the water that quenched thirst that they never knew existed, you know? We are mm -hmm. Africa. We are Africa's treasure. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And they, I, I heard somebody say, um, it, you know, because uh, 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 they were having problems, um, um, trouble, you know, people are, are talking about us knocking down the monuments, right? And I think I saw a post on Facebook where somebody said, Either or Instagram, they say I am, I am a monument. You know what I mean? It, 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 I am a monument. I am a monument. I am a living, breathing monument. Here, you understand what I'm saying? So I just thought that was kind of deep. You know, you said we're resilient. We're, you know, um, and then there was a line you said, um, 
past, present, and future. Hello? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, you said past, present, and future. Something you said, I am something, past, present, and future. Yeah, man. Not just regular guitarist chums, you know? I'm your past, present, and future. Yes, yes, yes. I like that. I like that because I got a poem. Uh, uh, um, um, I, I'll do it later on if 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 we have enough time. I'll Definitely. do it later on. It's it's reminds it, it's just remember what you said: past, present, and future. I'm gonna do this poem. Yeah, man. It's, we'll called, do it's dance, called yeah. the thinker. It's called the thinker. It it it. I think it'll it it'll uh sort of complement your piece. I like that piece. Yeah, man. Give thanks, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, so so when you have like a dope, awesome poet telling you that your stuff is dope, I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know what I mean? I got three <laughs> awesome god, I got a god and three goddesses, two goddesses up here telling me my stuff is dope. I'm like, yes, <laughs> dope people tell me. you know what I mean? That's like that's like Saul Williams saying, Yo, brother, your stuff is really dope, brother. <laughs> like, word, Saul Williams. <laughs> Don't give thanks, you know. I I I the truth is, you know, we're all creative people, and as, and as long as we reach into our innermost self, you know, yes. and, and especially being African people, we, we have that creative genius ingrained in our DNA, you know, and, yeah. and, I, and I think that is one of our strongest characters as African people, that we, we have a musical, poetic, vibration that, that that's just always there as african people I, it is my view that as an african people if you're not able to sing you must be able to dance you must be able to write you have some creative gift in you as a person yes sir yes sir yes sir i, I yeah go ahead I, and we all complement each other with our various talents in the area because kim here can sing she's a wonderful singer yes you know? And we're all writers. Uh, together, we make a wonderful team. There are persons out there who play guitar and play drums, you know? And together, we just make a wonderful, unstoppable team. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. How do you like something on here? I'm trying to like people's stuff. I can't even like them. Oh. I was just trying to like some of the people's stuff up here. I can't even like it. <laughs> I see my best friend Laura's up here. So Oh, you're trying to like <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to like respond, but you know, shout out uh, that's my best friend. Her name is Laura. She's a she's a dancer, a fitness trainer, a great sister. And I wanted to holler uh Jamaica, you know, and everybody that's showing love on here. And I was just, you know, I mean, like I, I didn't, you know, I see a lot of people. Awesome, really great, 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 great people. Who's Ikadash? Dela, sir. Ikadash, Dela, sir. That's my son. Oh, that's your that's son? That's my son. Bless up, Ikadash. Ikadash. What's my name? Where did you get the name from? Ikadash. Ikadash? What does it yeah. mean? What does it mean? That's, he will have to explain that to you. He gave himself that name. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you named them that. I was going to say that's a, that's kind of it sounds very very hard core. I could I could dash. I could dash. Okay. I could dash. Yeah. So Sister Maya, yeah, would, would would like to hear a poem from you because uh, since I've been on, I haven't heard any of your readings. So I don't know if you could go into give us okay. one of your nice poems. Yes, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. This one is called, There's Something Hidden. As she meditate, she felt positive. She is sure there's something hidden. Why, she said aloud. And her baby boy feeding on her breast jump. With a warm hug, she heard him again. She loved him more than she thinks she could or ever would. Even though he caused great pain. Why did your daddy lie and run away when he heard of your coming? Those months of loneliness and tears 
which fell from a woman's face when she is boxed by a man muscle hand because she thought he would overstand. The baby slept in comfort of her arms and she remembered she wanted to give him comfort. Only she alone and she alone have to give. Your father took it like a thief, she thought. Then smile at her baby. I always will have to give because I am the founder of the half that is hidden by the laws of men. That's it. Did you hear it? I heard it. <laughs> Might need to unmute nope. you. Yeah, sorry about that. Lovely, lovely poem, Mama. It's short though. Pardon me? It was, it's short though. Yes. I was, I was, I'm actually, you know, wanting some more. <laughs> but if okay, but that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so one, yeah, it's but you understand though. Yes, Mama. So, what's the inspiration for that poem? You know. It, it's like, this is more like a, a reality when you see a happening around you more than even an inspiration. Hmm. Because you hear so many sisters that will have a story like this. You know, the, the minute she got pregnant, the father wasn't there again. You know? And it caused so much pain and tears because she thought he would overstand. And it, it made her, even in the time of pregnancy, thought that she wouldn't even care or love her baby. And after the baby is born, she know that she love him or love her very much. But because of this stigma out there that most sisters is going through, this hurt, this misunderstanding of brothers' behavior. You know, let me just write it to make other daughters know that we all overstand. As mothers, they are not alone. We are all together and we know that most of this, this kind of behavior happened because of what we were being taught and it happened because we were as women we were get left behind we didn't have any talk one at a time you understand and it even the action it even showing that what is being preached don't have to be a gospel because the other half of the story has not yet been told. It is being hidden and it is not going to be told neither. The action is going to take place that everyone can know that yes, I have a part in all of this too as a woman. Come on, really, really. Appreciate that piece. I appreciate that piece so much for all of the women out there who have experienced maybe not that whole story, but bits and pieces of it. Because some of that is my story, not the whole thing, but some of it is my story. And a lot okay. of people, we don't have, especially Black women, don't have permission to be that vulnerable. We don't have permission to actually be in pain or to actually have some hurt that we're trying to deal with because the world expects us to be strong and expects us to handle everything and to fix everything. Exactly. So thank and you. So much. We don't have any exactly. Thank you so much for that piece. I, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank I'm getting you. ready thank to bring you. Rainmaker on screen. Okay. Oh, Rainmaker here. What's up? Where Rainmaker at? Please, what up, guy? Good, good, good. We have a lot of rain here, man. Ask Maya about it. 
<laughs> yes, we're having her, I'm having her in on this side now, too. Yeah, Maybe it's because he was coming. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you're yeah. a voice, but I'm not seeing her. You don't see You're a voice, but I'm not seeing his face. Rainmaker. No, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nope, still don't have your camera. It's it's a dark gray. We don't have your camera, but we got your voice, and that's what we really need. Keep working on the camera, but you know, those some got words. Are got it, got it, got it. Definitely. Um, so I will do this. Can y'all? Yeah. Rainmaker, sister Kim. You know, I never got to. Well, I don't. I don't see her. Bio for Rainmaker. Um, I did send you the bio, but I'll pull it up on my end. Um, okay. mm. It was short. It was short. I, I looked at the bio. Like, seriously? I've known this dude for... How long have I known you now? What, 13 years? And you sent me, like, much. a sentence bio? For real? <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I, I hate writing bios. Like, <laughs> it's like, ah... Uh, <laughs> here, here, here we go. You know, um, but I'm setting, I'm setting up currently, and because I want to do some stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna read Rainmaker's bio, and this is exactly what he sent me. Okay, I, I can tell you a little bit more about it, but his bio says Peter Charles Rainmaker Seaton has been performing poetry for 20 years professionally. He's the father of three beautiful poems. He believes in finding the hidden spaces oh. in them and letting the words kiss them. So that is beautiful. A little bit more about this gentleman. He is Jamaican born, am I correct? Yes. Kingston, right? Yes. Yes, so he has Jamaican heritage, he has Haitian heritage, and he, has, uh, he lives in the United States. And um, an incredible poet, an incredible poet. Pretty dope human being too, but an incredible poet. I appreciate that. That that that's love right there. That's all love. I mean, you 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 rolling up in here at thirty minutes before we're ending, so I know you got some words on the ready, right? I do, I do, okay. I do, I do. <laughs> okay. All right. No. I'll do this one. Okay. My grandma came to this country with a pyramid in her pocket. Sunflower seeds to plant bloodline. Native tongue curl sharp around the atmosphere. Head wrapped in juju as long as the Mississippi is deep. Passed from a maroon heritage. She with eyes born in determination. See the wind. The hollow of forever. The curse and gift held like siblings in her left breast will be the matriarch of this black magic, the gleam on the point of a needle, shouts and screams, dance into the cumbersome shadows of this city, my grandma. Holding our past in her stomach, so serenely suspended, silver shimmering spears, seven soft sycamore seat sap, sealing her energy at the corner of doors, deliberate diamond dawning over the blue blood orange horizon, Jamaica, made her woman beyond my mother. And that's that's that, but I want to give you something. I want to give you something else with that. But that's my introduction poem. Oh, Shorten. that's the poem. Okay, dope, dope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, give us some more. Okay, here we go. Uncle Sam is my grandfather. The Nazis are my first cousin. I'm deep in this like oil. Been trading arms to underdeveloped countries so generals to chop off arms and they get more arms. I see children as dollar signs. Put the politician and pimp. Got whole governments on a whole show. Let me tell you a little bit about my history. I was born in murder. Spread across waters, tattoo genocide across my neck. I'm a fiend for the green. Napoleon said everything my eyes look upon is mine. An imperial civilization that was savage to its subjects. And I've introduced every disease from the Black Plague to syphilis. Cause in my line of work, if people ain't screaming, I ain't earning. If bodies ain't hitting the floor, my bottom line ain't flying. Went to church and bought Jesus, now I'm holy with capitalism. Got a booster on one that became a payday. Hitler told me to finish my breakfast, so I bombed the cowards. 
People needed to be reminded that at the end of the world that my fingertips breathing destruction when I whispered slavering Columbus's ear. It paid off so well I'm still tweaking it till this day. Sit back and watch you run as I flip the ashes on the skull and bones in my ashtray. My name is America, but preferred the 13 colonies. I got bank roads and flesh. Peace to me is starvation. War makes the money, and I'm an expert at playing on your insecurities. All I see is dumb and dumber. Old money in this spot now. I can buy your soul a thousand times over and still have change left to give you a job. See, it's simple. I give the world just enough to survive, but never enough to change their condition. And I got the Bible working in overdrive because belief is a cash cow. Cash your hard done dollars in on salvation. I got a mansion underneath the Vatican. It all comes back to me. You can slave for 40 years and you can pay for 40 years. I keep people hungry so I can build more prisons. Back the dollar with lies so gold could be obsolete. I got secret societies. I don't need to be diplomatic. Democracy is just my storefront, but I'm manufacturing pure grade A world domination. Stop the international news from getting in and saturated new reports of gang violence in Britain. Cut school funding because it doesn't make me any money if our children are smart. I need people in debt around me so I can leverage their situation to my benefit. Got tired of doing all this by myself, so I birthed big businesses. Now we all keep the money between us. Only the strong survive. Only the cold hearted lift the skin of the sunrise. And the criminals at the bottom got nothing to do with the criminals at the top. Just look at our healthcare system, our social security system. Been this way since the Indians been trying to tell you. And if you can do about it. So I have my right hand on your heartstrings. So what you need to do is what you've always done. And bend the fuck over. <laughs> you something like a prophet, aren't you? Because that poem <laughs> still way, that poem is way too relevant. <laughs> And I've been trying to retire that poem nah. for a long time. Nah. I'm like, I am nah. tired of doing this poem. Nah, no, but we're tired of living the poem. You know what I mean? So indeed. I mean, we got to live it, sit in it. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, definitely. Um, I, I prepared, I prepared oh, one. Um, I'm not sure if you can still hear me because I'm, when I move the screen, I don't know if my audio is still, if you guys can still hear my audio. Because I'm on my. No, we can I'm, hear your I'm audio fine. We just can't see you. We can hear your audio fine though. Okay. Okay. So. Melanin, Bob, Rain, um, weigh yeah. in on that on, on that work. Okay. Yeah, man, it's it's really it's really dope. As I said, you know, it's really a matter of fact. I love everything that Rain kind of, does. I'm <laughs> kind of yeah, that, man. That, that got Definitely. me writing poems, the spoken word. You know, yeah. Yeah, man, this is kind yeah. of poetry, poetry that got me writing poetry. 18, 17 years ago or something like that, you know. Mm. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm really inspired today, you know. You're in Rainmaker mm. and Bob One God Be Done, you know, doing their spoken word free verse poems. That, that you know, I really like those poems where you speak your mind. Yeah, yeah. there's um, never an issue from that for either one of those poets. There is never an issue of them speaking their mind. They always speak their mind. <laughs> I, that's, I love that, that's, that's love that's how it should be. This is this is very 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 true. Uh, very true. Sometimes I speak my mind to my own detriment. Yeah. <laughs> then so that has not you, been. We have a comment on the screen. Somebody wants to know how they can get the words of the second poem. Um. So that actually, uh, well, you can, um, I'll give out my, um, my Instagram page. It's Rainmaker Zero. Um, so the actual word zero, and they can, they can at me there, and then we can take it from there. Because that poem is not. Matter of fact, that's um, Maya Nature's daughter, Tibab Delisa. Okay. And just so you know, that poem is actually posted. The video is on Life Circle Poets um, page wall. Oh, so okay. If you'd like to go to the Life Circle Poets page, Uncle Sam is posted on that page. Raymaker, I don't know that, but yeah. Oh, oh, you posted it? For? Okay. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, definitely. definitely. Hey, Raymaker. Yes. Hold on. What's good, man? Yo, man, you should turn your camera on because I want to see you, brother. I haven't seen him in like forever. 
This I'm trying Rainmaker. to turn my camera on. I don't know what's I, going I, I've on. I've known Rainmaker for like years, 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 years. I remember uh, uh, um, uh, my Ernell, who was up there earlier. He used to uh, uh, used to have a uh, uh, Rainmaker come through, and Rainmaker has come through uh, outside the box, right? Um, this brother yeah. is like one of the dopest brothers that I've known. And you know something else I think I found out about you, and is it true, Rainmaker, that you are Haitian? I am half Haitian, yes. So, buddy, Cleo? Yeah, but listen, listen, I, I, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay? I'm learning. I didn't find that That's out until right. years later. I am learning. All right? That's all right. That's uh, all right. That's I, met, I met some Haitian good. family members. I met some Haitian family members, and they roasted me in Creole because I didn't know the language. <laughs> Like that was the worst two hours of my life. You hear me? We all around the dinner table and they talking and roasting me and laughing and pointing. Yo, no, nah. I need to. I need to learn that language quick, fast. <laughs> that's what my nephews. That's what my nephews are going through right now. But none, none of them really speak the language. None mm. of them really speak the language. You got like over 30 nephews and nieces, and none of them really speak Creole. Wow. I'm like, um, but yo, brother, man, like when I found I was like, man, a lot of a lot of a lot of my uh uh uh, uh greatest people are, are either Haitian or Caribbean, some type of Caribbean. You know what okay. I mean? Like I'm like, okay. words, so you know, Saul Williams, you know Saul Williams Haitian. Yes, I knew that. I definitely knew that. But yes. I I think I found that out when um when you know it didn't really matter to me at that point, but you know, when, you know, I was like, Oh, okay, let me, let me go back. And I started reading up about uh, Haiti and I started going through the different uh, political structures that happened on the Island. And, you know, and then listening, listening to uh, family members who, who were there for certain uh, coups that happened. And it was just, it was mm -hmm. wow. And I was like, I didn't really, I didn't know I was connected in some way to it. So finding that out was like it was it was a big deal. Wow. What is the day? Who's that? You see? Who's that? You see? Yep. Who's that? You see? See the head? I don't know what you're saying, but I you, know. you are Haitian. Yes, sir. You are Haitian. Yes, <laughs> you know. I was trying. To, I was trying to. Uh, I was. I was trying to like see if I could read the tone. Like, I may not understand you, but I'm like, let me see if I can catch the tone of the <laughs> word and, and put it together that way. Oh, my God. I, it, was a, it was a problem. It, they, they literally, my cousins, my, my cousins I now found, they will call me and just go into Creole. Like, and I'm just like, you, you realize I, I don't know what you said, right? <laughs> That's no, all that. right, brother. You got, you got ever to learn it. You're going to learn it, man. Indeed. You gotta learn it, cause I, I just got lucky. Like there was, you know, I, I, I was born here though. I was born mm -hmm. here. My mother had ten kids. I'm the eighth child, first one born here. Got so it. So my mother had last ten kids here in the U.S. And so man, uh, um, it's good to see you again, brother. Oh man, he's gone. Uh, it's good to see him, man. Uh, uh, uh that's my dude. Um. Yes, I, I want to hear uh, somebody sing. I heard somebody could sing. Oh, did you? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, he's back. Maybe his camera is. I see him moving. Maybe his camera is working this time. Let's see. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. There we go. I knew I was gonna fix it eventually. I'm a Virgo. I can't. I can't let that shit rock. Like I gotta. <laughs> like, it will bother me. It will bother me, especially especially as I got older. I was like, I walk into the room and, and move things back in their place. It's weird. Not you. Yeah, it's weird. It's oh, see, weird. Kicking like, in a little bit. That, <laughs> neat, that neatness, that neatness thing that Virgos are always, I never had it. I never had it until yeah. I hit like 39. I was like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> Beautiful portrait, though, brother. Good to see you. Thank Good you. to see you. Thank yeah. you, thank you, definitely, uh, definitely. I don't know about everybody else, but I'd really like to hear our next Rainmaker poet, poem, yeah? All right, I, I think I got one for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. 
This is called uh, Killing Black Men in Prayer. Deep seated, forever vigilant. If the owl and the hawk be the guide, then love be the gun held at the politics head. The bang be the sound of freedom. They can't kill what will never die. But you can't tell them the bullets aren't the sun. You can only shoot a spirit with the mind. Only keep watch over the kindling of fire. Be determined inside of a statue. Your eyes will not travel to the back of your head. You will have to use your sense. Be extraterrestrial and terror. Find yourself an Independence Day that is not 4th of July. More like 4th of another part of your soul. A bleeding earthquake holds court in between bottom lip and ear attached to what God may be whispering to you in the morning. Deep seated, forever vigilant. You hold more Adam than Adam. Be creator and butterfly wing, hearing Lupe in a rice field that feels like your pillow and a good night's sleep. You tell the birds to sing. They chant something you need for the day ahead, for the feeling after this moment, for when you read the next line, like you can't know breath till you have watched a woman hold it so it's not to tell you that she loves you. See, do you feel that? Right there is what I was talking about. And people say that love is not political. It is probably the most dangerous thing you and your most human of hearts will ever embark on. When you meet yourself at the end of yourself, and watch someone you do not recognize tap both of you on the shoulder and walk out and leave you feeling beside yourself, then and only then can you speak of how glass can sing just the, mere, just the mere sight. It is the only time you can say, I mean, I am patient. And I mean it more than the person hearing it will ever believe you. Maybe that's why we are addicted to the bang, to the connection of projectiles with marrying fragile in the symphony, symphony of the splutter of splatter thrown like a five-year-old looking for his favorite toy in a room. Nine out of a god, 10 times it will be a toy gun. But you should never be sad at such a thing. It is just life still trying to shoot itself into existence, still trying to make sure it feels something beyond throwing all this energy for us to feed on. We are deep-seated vigilant, a forgotten tongue, hill and bow people. Our women lay claim to hit to mind and know all the ignorance we are burdened with. Even if they do not act they feel it. Every mother knows this man made of a place is not worthy to raise offspring, but she does it because we see the halo swimming inside our bodies. Maybe that's why they love to shoot us. They're trying to use the only thing they believe in to pray to a God they cannot understand. Wow. 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 That's some deep, deep, deep stuff there, man. You know, like, it's like poetry Sunday has gone to our next level with this kind of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want you to that. tell the people that are listening, where does your mind go when you are writing a poem like that? Because there are different kinds of poems that you can write, but that one... Where, where does your mind go? Where do you go when you're getting the words and you're putting together the concepts to write a piece like that? Oh. I will say this. I will say this. I never know what I'm going to write about before I start writing. I have no clue. <laughs> I, I feel it. I feel an energy or a feeling. And I'm like, okay, I need to write something. And then I kind of, the, the, I'll go through some thoughts and then the first word, the first line will come to me and I'll write that. And then from there, it's just, everything starts talking to me. Like it's, it's, I, I still cannot explain it. And I've been trying, I've been trying to map the core of how that play is put together for years. Mm -hmm. And I can, but I know my writing does change. Like after a certain while, it will, it will go through a whole new writing process. And I'll have to actually find that process as to what makes that spark happen. And mm. that's how I know I got, I mean, that's how I know I jumped the level. Okay, okay. 
Because I think it winds up being different for everybody. Some people sit down with the intention to write about this particular topic and they do research on it or whatever, and then they write it out. And some people honestly do write by inspiration. And um, that's something that's really hard to explain, but that's why I asked you that question because some people write by inspiration and people, it's, it's difficult to explain to those that don't have that writing process or don't right. go through that. Anybody else here write by inspiration um, or do you, you know, what are some of the ways that your writing process happens? Bob, Melanin, Mama Yaya, what are some of the ways that your writing process happens? Bob, go first. Well, well, uh, well, me, uh, um, it's hard for me to write away, write about something that I'm passionate about right away. You know, it has to sink in. It has to be authentic. It has to, I usually let the poem write itself. Mm. For me, can I say now? Yeah, man, go ahead. Um, yes. For me, sometimes my writing come from inspiration. One way, and like like a rainmaker. Bob, I think your feed keeps freezing up. We thought that you were finished talking. We missed a big chunk of whatever you said. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 So give us a second. Let Mama Yaya let Mama Yaya tell us her process. And then we're going to come back to Bob. Hopefully, he'll get back on. Go ahead, yeah, Mama. Yeah. Yes, as I was saying, I sometimes write, most time, from inspiration. But mm. sometimes my writing come from action, that I things that I see going on around me. And, yeah, just the things that I will see go, go on around me can make me inspire me to write or mm. most time it come from inspiration so when I write it, it's not like every day I get up I write a poem mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you write what about you Melanin well for me it, it, it comes in several different ways sometimes it can be out of inspiration um, like you're sitting down and a, a certain line may come to you or you're thinking about something that is of concern to you and some lines and some words just start and, and you just write it down there. There are other times I say, like when I was working on my book, I say, well, there's some poems I need to write and I, my poems need to be of a certain kind of theme. And so I just wrote as the line, like I just get up and say, today I have to write and sat down and the words come. You know, it's like you force yourself to write. And there are other times where there's no there's no force. Um, mm. To me, when you're mm. forcing, it's like you work into the feeling. Instead of feeling it and doing it, you work mm. yourself into the feeling. And there are mm. other times where the feeling now force you to work. Right. And so I've, I've, I've been able to experience both over, over, the, over the years of writing. And to me, it's not just one thing, but however... I think the best writing comes from when you're inspired, when something just comes to you like out of the blues like that. You know, mm -hmm. whatever times it comes, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, six o'clock, five o'clock in the evening. Wow. <laughs> now many of those poems take two minutes to write. Don't no care how long it is. Because it's it's yeah. just there and you're just putting it out on paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my part. Poems like what you were just talking about, Melanin, those are the ones that I usually wind up memorizing as I'm writing them. So I know that that one needs to be out in the world. Those yeah, are the yeah. ones that I'm writing it, it gets locked in and I memorize it while it's being written. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. There's just some poems that the heart, you know what I mean? There's just poems that actually speak, like it's more so the body that's writing it than, than, mm. than you. Yeah. You know, like the heart is actually writing the poem. That's a whole different energy than yeah. you know, you're you're just like, okay, I'm writing this poem and you're you're feeling it, you're connected, 
but when your heart is doing it, because it the poem sounds completely different from everything you've ever written. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Rainmaker, I want you to go back and watch the beginning after this. I want you to go back and watch the beginning of the show because Mama Yaya opened us up with some poetry and she brought the concept of freedom being a word that doesn't work for us because it doesn't vibrate on a high enough frequency for us to be able to grab it and use it for our benefit. So we need to find so we need to find another word so drop some of your thoughts about um that whole concept oh oh man well first of all (laughs) damn yeah mama yana she came with fire this afternoon she came with fire that hit me but first off i i i would say i would i agree um, just hearing, just, just, uh, you know, just hearing the concept first, you know what I mean? Uh, the way it hit me, I was like, oh, my, my whole soul was like, yes, right? So um, we're speaking a dead language. Mm. I you think know, so. Not our tongue. This is not, you know, our vocal, our vocal cords are, you know, we basically can speak so many different tones in normal conversation and mm-hmm. and so i really do feel like you know words and sound vibrates on a certain frequency so we definitely have to find the words that can speak to our melanin to each other's melanin and affirm that in, in each other you know what i mean um so like i believe the commission word for for, for black is queen right but when you say it you use your you use all of your your diaphragm yeah to say it so it has a completely different energy than how you just say black or that you are you know or white or you know you know stuff like that it's just i i agree i agree i agree that that's probably why we ain't free yet mm-hmm. right right that was so incredible when she said that i was like wait what that's where we're going today yeah. Change everything. It's like, wait, hold on. She just flipped the whole concept on on its head. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I, I like. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so it is five fifty-five my time, four fifty-five Jamaica time. That means we are five minutes away from ending. So Melanin, how do you want to wrap this up? Bob didn't get a chance to give his explanation of how his poetry process happens, but how do you want to wrap this up? Well, um, I, I will wrap it up with us giving everyone, um, including you, giving a piece of power poetry. Yes. Um, because that's why we are here to show the world our talents and connect. I, I, re- I really, this vibe we're having here online, it, 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 there's a yearning I'm having right now to, to just have a physical connection where we can meet face to face and perform some poetry for the world, you know, mm. and reason and, and, sh- and show love, you know. Yeah, so um, so I think the best way for do it is for us to take a minute or two each and um, get into some poetry. But I think it will be good to hear what Brother Bob One God Bidon was saying about his writing process. Um, seems like he's having some issues. Are you good? No, I'm mean, kind of weak. So yeah. I mean, go ahead. We're listening. I look like it's full. It's kind yeah, of funny. It keeps freezing up. Yeah. But, uh, we're hearing like every 10th word that you say. I promise you. I still want to hear what you're saying. I'm hearing you so much. Yeah, I think it's frozen. Um, all right, why don't we start dropping our poetry and hopefully the internet. Oh will- man, the Wi Fi. 
There you are. Yeah, can y'all hear me? I can see me. We, we yeah, hear we like every tenth word that you say, and your screen is frozen. So your Wi-Fi is really acting up. Not, not your name. Anyway, we, we are wrapping up, and um, I would like if well, we could start with Mama again. Mm -hmm. Yes, to start, give us our poetry, our closing poems. Okay. <laughs> this one is called, this poem is called Stop the Hurting. Mm. Earth is hurting. Earth is hurting and earthling or crying, crying, or should I say weeping. Because of a sin and iniquity we were born in. Who is the maker of sin and iniquity? I say who is the maker of sin and iniquity? It could not be you or me or our parents before us, for we are told we were born in it. Our innocent, defenseless flesh was born in it. So we can't be blamed for it. So earthling want to know who has hurt our earth so Earth is hurt. Our earth is hurt and earthling or crying, 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 or should I say weeping. Our loved ones are dying east, west, north, and south because of the sin and iniquity we are told we are born in. I say, who is the maker of this sin and iniquity? Who is the maker of this sin and iniquity? We find him to be guilty. We find him to be guilty, guilty, guilty for this sin and iniquity. is hurting, hurting earth and her earthly. Mother Earth put out her providence within many choices. Never a threat. Never did she put on an earthly. Yet we were told our innocent, defenseless flesh was birthed in it in sin and iniquity. Shame, disgrace, and force which it is by a maker who also make a hellfire to burn us in. Hmm. Now, his sin and iniquity has become a monster as we can see, trying to destroy Mother Earth and her earthly. East, West, North, and South Earth is hurting. East, West, North, and South Earthling are crying, dying. Isn't this time to seek him, to find him, this monster of sin and iniquity, and stop, stop, stop him from hurting, hurting, hurting Earth and her Earthling? This maker, this maker, maker, maker of sin and iniquity is guilty. Thank you. Mm. Oh. And since we are about to go to our ending, I would like to big up all the audience, family, yeah. friends, and friends, and okay. more friends, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you know, we're coming to the end. Yeah, man, we do give thanks, Mama. That was a wonderful, um, deep poetry, you know? See, my we are, throwing, we are throwing a lot of fire on Western civilization and the oppression this evening. We have mm. to. Yes. <laughs> really, really love that. Rainmaker, what yeah. say you now? What makes you think you can say whatever you please? You who are a disenfranchised version of himself. Weren't you raised by a woman? Didn't you address her by name, by title, by love? What button of your humanity refuses to work? What firewall that is non-existent? Do you not have daughters and nieces? Can you not make the coalition between your own flesh and that of a stranger? Isn't the color the same? Don't the eyes still speak of ancient, of fragility, of purpose beyond your stained cheeks, dried with the longing of your falsified perversion? 
Do you not see that she is not her hip, her hair? Can't you see her in her words, in the love, the warmth of hands, the rise and fall of the air flowing through her? What manner of man are you to fall to the norm of things? To speak as if she was less than. You act as if she was the sun and all you wanted to do was disembowel her sky. You act as if you remembered your slave masters by their first names. Act as if you were calling property. Of seeing the charm everyone told you that you have been put on display, it would be wise to think twice about the women that stop to your advances. That finds this sort of thing appealing. Maybe you don't understand the body image concept. Maybe you have not felt what it's like to be wearing clothes and still feel naked. To stare into a mirror and feel not enough of yourself. Too damning of a let down, too tar road stretch. Could you imagine seeing your hair and your skin and calling it black on black crime? Where is your billboard cooking jaw now, brother? Did you think she would have stopped for you and your hundred dollars of clothes? that wish they were not new slavery, not exchange for money, you still don't know the meaning of, still look at your skin and the dollars in your hand and can't make the correlation, all abuzz with ego, women do not respond to anybody on the street, it is survival, you are still stranger danger, she is not an item in Ikea, she did not walk by for your amusement, your arousal, the sidewalk is not an auction block, you should know better than trying to be better than bringing flesh on display. Your cat call is no different from a bullet. The same principles apply. Same tearing of flesh, tearing of the psyche that will be perused over in a mirror somewhere and she is not a bitch if she does not respond to you. And why should she? Your tongue made her feel of just her body parts. You are already outclassed, outgunned. You brought a limited vocabulary to a university fight. The next time you get the urge to whistle your way at a woman, Shut up. Stay silent. If you must admire, please do so in silence because your eyes already feel like barrels aimed at her set. Wow. Great. No, that's that's, that's, that's that good stuff. Deep. Good stuff. I would like to close I would like to close this section. So sister Kim, would you are we Baba? Yeah. I'm still here, but for some reason I don't see everybody else. You don't see it's us? Like, uh, can everybody see me? Yes. Yeah, I'm seeing it. We're seeing it. Yeah. I can't see you. I don't see y'all. I I don't see like the, I don't see like I don't see like the the, the screen light like we. Have. Unbelievable. Yeah, something is going on with your because we can see. I just see you know how in the bottom left you see yourself mainstream. Yeah, here you go. It bugged out again on me. And you know what I'm gonna do? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, see, right? Um I'm mm -hmm. thinking about just I'm thinking about going on my phone. So you want me to do a piece and then uh uh the thing Girl. Yeah, if, if we He's get your internet up. back right now, then we I, I can get a poem from you. That, that one, uh, should I go? Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, man, go, go ahead. ahead. I am the deep, I am the deep thinker. Thinking more deeper than I think that I passed, and, and it's my past, the present that my future was referring to. If so, would that make me much slower than me three minutes from an hour ago? Perhaps I'm still here somewhere, trapped in me, my eyelids gasping up for tomorrow. I'm surrounded by lions lying in her image, remembering how to speak nature. Pieces, pieces speaking from an atom as if my jacket shirt has become the holy Quran. I am the prophet Muhammad strumming my fingers in the guitar string. I become Bob Marley. They shot me in the peace rally, holding my wound. The bloodshed on my wound had turned me into a rose, holding me at the wedding. I am the groom. My wife, Isis. I am Moses holding a papyrus scroll of which turns into a wooden staff. I've parted the rest of the sea, raised my palms, arms turns into a serpent's head, feathered off the, my wrist into a dove, holding the knowledge branch on the Titanic, making love to my rose washed ashore somewhere in Africa. 
I am King Shaka Zulu. I watch the fugitive master in Lynch now, writing letters to my slave master. I am Frederick Douglass, of who I now know as no the second. I am the A racist Mohammed Gandhi's peace. Shalom, trapped in the crevice of my left cheek, underneath four strands of my eyelid. Underneath four strands of my eye head, only to appear as a father in a courthouse fighting the feminist movement. And enter. It is more than the steel silhouettes of a Baptist man and William Patterson crying genocide. Show. Mm -hmm. is a man from the grave, ready from the sweat, rain, sweat, trickling down the father's neck, says I shall bed, pointing at a feet of pain, her connected eyebrow, unibrow, broad burning finger, turns to tobacco now, Jay Guevara's lips, puffing a cigar, scar, crying to a whiplashing, transforming into the form of Mother Teresa, rubbing her rosary, Pope John, King for me, I'm the slave master, beating me, Striking himself to mention that come the sun being in sizzling hot heat, burnt cascade agony, swimming in dark light, frozen in time. God, Arbery whispers in my ears. She whispers in my ears and she reaches out and she calls me Troy. She calls me Troy. She calls me Troy. She calls me Troy. I open my eyelids, appearing as myself three minutes from now. Am I, are y'all still? Everybody still here? Yeah, your voice is going in and out, but we're still here. I'm not here by myself. Sounds like that's it from Boab. We're done. Not hearing him that much, to be honest. That's going in and out. You're so small over there. You got to see what I'm. <laughs> This is a situation. The internet is really going to act up. Right. <laughs> so, Bob, we didn't get to hear all of that piece the way we would have liked to. Um, all right. Are you able to do, do you have that poem in an audio clip that you can send to me? And yeah. I, yeah, I'll post it. <laughs> that's, that's football. Oh, <laughs> He didn't hear it? Not he all of it. it. He couldn't hear it's all of it. In hit bits. But if you can send it to me in an audio clip, then I will post it on the Facebook wall so that people can get the opportunity to hear that. And now the internet has dropped completely for him. Okay. Oh, Melanin, you said you want to close out our time. So I'll go ahead and do my poem. Um, Stony the road yes. we tried, bitter chastening okay. rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed and yet we are here finding and redefining center community life and love diasporically thriving in what the world would deem catastrophic as their reality a magic that is very human very flawed and very divine 
We've walked roads that bore resemblance to unpassable, have made a way out of no way and brought the undeserving out with us. We have sharpened mm. it and our tongues on languages, religions and practices that were not our own, have made them our own, have taken pieces of that to blend with this, called it culture, made it norm because we would not die, would not disappear. And all the while we've set the tone, we've dropped the mic, we've established the norm, stood tall in the storm, excelled in the most unlikely places, shaped and claimed some of the most healing spaces, and we are here. We will be here. And even in our fallibility, our magic saves lives, establishes balance, undergirds the foundation of beauty standards, and we will never be common because we have always been greatness. And there remains a remnant, we will not be silent, lest we as a people forget everything that it took for us to make it this far. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from me still now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast who don't know that song is the second verse of lift every voice and sing which is the negro national anthem in the united states oh wow okay wow crazy tone though absolutely <laughs> strong. beautiful i think nothing yeah. has changed beautiful <laughs> form i think nothing has changed you're still a giant with the pen thank you thank you Beautiful, my sister. Thank Not you. Well. I hope Coming I can. Like, uh... when, you, when, you, when you came to the end, I was still listening for more. <laughs> <laughs> that that song inspires was... so much poetry in me. That song. Yeah. <sighs> but that's the trend this evening. I hope I can keep up the, the quality of poetry that was read earlier. Um, Alex. So I guess it's my time to close the show for this evening. Alex, you gotta let me out. You gotta let me out. So no, you didn't. Okay, so it's my time. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. This poem. Oh, you just closed this, the window. You didn't log me out. You just closed. Oh, uh, this poem is called "Never Before." Reparations for the African nations. Reparations for us Africans, they had carried beyond to the Americas and the Caribbean. The time is now, the moment is right. Reparations, we have to get it somewhere, somehow. Never before had a people been treated so badly. Mm. Illegally captured and shipped like pack rice, some thrown overboard like spoiled milk. In filthy conditions, they brought us to the West to be auctioned like art and craft, only less expensive, less valuable. Never before had a people been treated so badly. Pan plantation, them transport way, separate way. Take man from them woman, take woman from them man, take picnic from them parents. Like door, them mix way. Like cornmeal, them turn way. Like breadfruit, them roast way. Never before had a people been treated so badly. For almost 400 years, them enslaved way. Kill, rape, drip, scrape, whip, rename way, brand way. We were nobody. 16 hours a day, them walk way. One man walk like three donkey. And I'll know them not pay away. Them build mansions and palaces, banks and insurance companies, institute legislation for right up them ranks, teach against we in a history, miseducate we, bring down colonialism, imperialist capitalism. Them don't press we from within and without. Them almost drain the blackness out of our skin. 
never, never before had a people been treated so badly. Me said never before had a people been treated so badly. 1838 in the British West Indies, them said them emancipated way. To add insult to shame, them pay them friends, the murderers, rapists, liars and thieves, the same plantation owners, because them said them lose property. Since then, we are charged a course. Some of we still and still live like in a slavery. Some of we still unsure about who we be. All because never before had the people been treated so badly. So now we want them to pay with billions, trillions, and not own the money. They have to make enough apology and give back all the things they take from we. And admit say a lie they are telling a history. Say African people come from monkey. Never before had a people been treated so badly. Reparations for the Africans. Referee, reparations for us Africans. They carried beyond to the Americas and the Caribbean. The time is now. The moment is right. We now give up our right. Because never before had a people been treated so badly. Mm. Awesome. Bye. Yeah. Listen, I wrote that one for the reparation movements, you know, because we're seeking our reparations, you know. Wonderful. Oh, justice. Wonderful. Bob Dan. Yes, yes. Can you, yeah, um, you know send, me, send me your poem in an audio clip and I'll put it on our Facebook page? I could do that. I could send a poem. I have to go find it. Um, okay. Actually, and I could send, um, send it to your page or to this page right here. You can send it directly to me and I'll just post it on the Facebook page so everybody can get the opportunity to hear it. Cause it was good, but we heard like every fifth word you would say the internet, just the internet wouldn't let you be great. <laughs> I am so sorry. Honestly, I've, I've um, actually I was, <laughs> I really have this whole Teddy Riley thing going on. If you understand, <laughs> see Rainmaker probably know what I'm talking about when I said the Teddy Riley thing going on. Um, <laughs> I thought Rainmaker I was prepared. Looking like not exactly. <laughs> it's the Wi-Fi. Uh, um, the Wi-Fi was kind of weak where I was, so yeah. um, so that's why I kept on coming in and out. Facebook, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm so good. sorry. It's uh, all good because we got an hour and forty-five minutes of you. We we just didn't get fifteen minutes, but we got an hour and forty-five minutes of you. It was excellent. Go ahead and let's close it out because we are well past six o'clock, but we wanted to go ahead and get those last wonderful words in. Yeah, I just I really, really want to thank everyone for participating today. Um, Rainmaker, Boab, One God Bid, and thank you for being a part of Life Circle Poets, Poetry Sundays. Um, yeah. I think you, because of your contribution, our evening has gone up a bit more higher. And Poetry Sundays is, we're growing. And I really want to shout out to everyone out there who is a part of the audience and supporting Life Circle Poets. We just really um, give thanks. We, we really do give thanks. And continue mm -hmm. giving us your support. Um, we are planning to have much more things than just Poetry and Life Sundays, but more stuff to come in the future. So. Just want to give thanks. Thank my eye and nature, who is the elder in Life Circle Poets, always there, always willing, always able. And, you know, everyone yes. out there, Barrington Mitchell, we have Sister Coral Jamaica Green Grant, we have Sister Kim Burley right here, who has been a tower of strength and the get go. So, did my phone just die? I can't really thank everyone. You know? What the heck is going on? Kimberly, any last words from you on or any parting words just wanna, of this just evening? Wanna, just want to encourage people to come back. Um, we will be here again next Sunday. We will have new artists and new poetry and new words to share. And we're going to, yeah. Mama Yaya, I am going to be rethinking a lot of, so the word freedom is one that I use, but my poetry name is Redefining Freedom. And I think for <laughs> 
conversation. I think that is absolutely appropriate. So I'm going to be rocking my poetry name with pride. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. everybody. The need. <laughs> Everybody that has joined us today, thank you so much for being in. We appreciate you. We appreciate Rainmaker and Bob. The internet tried to get in the way, but Bob gave us an hour and 45 minutes of fabulousness. So ha 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 on that. And thank you, Melody, for joining us. Um, we'll see you all later. Everybody enjoy the rest of the day and go into your week in power and peace and prosperity. Peace and blessings to all of you. Yeah, we do give love. Thanks. Give thanks. Good night, y'all. Bye, circle points. We do give thanks. One love. No, no.